Hello. Hi. Welcome. doing a bit of a reading and writing vlog. I usually wake up a little bit earlier so I can start my day with some writing before I have to jump into everything else like work and taking care of the kitties and everything that comes with, you know, being alive every day. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of writing. I'm working on a novel right now. It is in its second draft. Uh, the best way to describe it is young adult um, demons. Demons for young adults, I guess. Um, and as I said, I'm in the second draft. I'm using the first draft as a really detailed outline to kind of guide me through basically a rewrite. Some scenes aren't being totally rewritten, but um, that first draft is kind of guiding me through the second draft. And I'm about 20,000 words into the second draft. Um, so yeah, that's where we are right now. My goal every day has been to write at least 500 words. My stretch goal is 1,000 words, uh, but I don't want to put that as my real goal every day uh, because it's a little bit too much pressure and I've noticed that if I am trying to hit a higher word count, sometimes the additional words I push out just aren't as good or end up being cut. So 500 is our baseline and as long as I reach 500 words, I'll be super happy with that. I'll also give you a little sneak peek of my writing area. It's in a home office that I share with my partner, Arthur. Uh, I also share it with my two cats, Buffy and Willow, who are very cute and want to be with us all the time. So we have a cat tree in here so they can move around and do their thing. So my writing desk is only used for writing and I found it super helpful to have a designated spot in my apartment where I just work on my writing. I just work on my novels or writing projects and nothing else. It means when I sit down here I know that that's all I'm going to be working on and I can kind of get in the right headspace and actually focus on what I'm doing. So let's jump into it. Um, I just finished my writing session. I wrote for about a half hour. I usually like to give myself at least an hour um, in case I want to keep writing past my natural stopping point. Um, and in today's session, I wrote 825 words, which is really great, super exciting, a lot closer to that 1000 word mark that I'm hoping to get to soon where um, I want that to be, you know, easy, relatively easy to achieve every day. And we are we're inching closer and closer to that um, every day. So feeling good about today's writing session and the amount of words I wrote. Uh, so now I'm just going to get my day started and I'll check back in when I start reading for the day. See you then. excited to be talking about this book today, uh, the book that I'm currently reading and I've been reading for the past few weeks or so, and that book is The Library of the Dead by T.L. Huchu. Uh, so this is set in Edinburgh, Scotland in the distant future, um, but in, in this future Scotland and Edinburgh in particular has fallen into disrepair and become a much darker and bleaker place than it is right now because it is opposite of that right now I would say. Um, and we follow the main character, Ropa, who is a 14-year-old girl who has dropped out of school to help support her family. She lives with her gran, her grandmother, and is we, her little sister, and then live in a caravan on some defunct farmland. Um, and Ropa uh, is a ghost talker. So she can see ghosts, and she talks to the dead, and she takes messages from them to their living family members or acquaintances. And that's how she makes money. That's how she makes her coin uh, to support her family. Her gran, I think, also like knits for uh, the people in your local community uh, and does that to barter for other goods. Uh, so that's another way that they're kind of keeping their little family afloat in this very dystopian and harsh reality. Like I said, I've been reading this for a little while now. I'm actually almost done with it. I'm almost near the end. Um, what page am I on, actually? 
I'm on 243 and there's about, uh, there's a little over 300 pages. So I'm reaching the end, uh, but I did want to share my thoughts about this because I feel like it's a really good spooky fall read. Um, it's not really Halloween flavored, but it's super spooky and it has some light horror elements. So if you're looking for something a little bit spooky, a little bit creepy, uh, but nothing like totally gross or will give you nightmares for like the rest of your days, uh, then I highly recommend this. Um, we, uh, we follow Ropa through her day to day as a ghost talker. Uh, and we meet her friend Jomo, who is still in school because his family is a little bit better off. He doesn't need to actually help support them. Uh, but he takes a job at a local library, uh, this um, secret library, uh, we would, I would say. And he starts to tell um, Ropa about it because he thinks it's really cool. And she's like, I gotta check this place out. And that's really where we come into the library in this uh, in the title. Uh, we actually don't really get there until about 50 pages in, and it's a magical library. So yeah, so she really wants to check out this really cool magical library. Um, so that is one part of the overall story. And then another part is that a ghost comes to her early on who doesn't have any money, who asks for her help to find her missing son. Her son went missing with another friend a little while ago, and then uh, we don't know the circumstances of the mother's death, but now she is a ghost, sadly, and uh, she wants Ropa to help find her son because, um, you know, Ropa is one of the only people she can talk to. She can only communicate with ghost talkers. She can't communicate with any el anyone else in the living. And in this world, the police do not care. Like, they do not give a shit. Like, early on in this book, a... Uh, there is a unfriendly encounter with some police officers and they are basically just um, the most corrupt you can possibly imagine. Like, um, like if you thought it was bad nowadays, uh, it is much worse in this world. Uh, so the police don't care about missing children in this world. Um, and Ropa at first doesn't really want to help her, um, but then eventually her gran convinces her that this is the right thing to do to try to help find this missing child. And that kind of kicks off. A chain of events uh, and takes us through the main arc of the story. So besides these plot elements, the story moves along at a pretty fast pace, it's really engaging, and the sentences are beautifully written. Um, there is a lot of really beautiful descriptions and turns of phrase that like knocked me off my feet. And then it's also written in first person in Ropa's voice, and we really hear the her manner of speech, which is uh, it feels a bit Scottish to me. I've I've been to Scotland. I've heard uh, Scottish speakers, and she definitely speaks like someone from a city in Scotland. And I thought that was really fun to kind of read that dialect on the page and have a book be written in that voice uh, rather than writing it um, in plain old English. So my plan right now is to finish reading this book, take you along with me, and then check in at the end to just recap some more of my thoughts if I have any more. I feel like I've already said a lot of what I wanted to say about this book. I think it's really good. I'm very close to the end, so I don't feel like anything's gonna happen that's gonna change my opinion. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. Hello. So I wanted to take a quick break from reading and just share a description that I found to be really beautiful that I think just shows how really amazing the writing is. Uh, this is from page 245. The skies turned blood red as the sun sets. This time of year it happens quick. To the west a yellow strip of cloud, vivid like a sweltering bat in a forge. From there the red orange spills out like brush strokes going north to south until the paint runs out at the purple fringes of the sky. Maybe this is what hell looks like and it's beautiful. Pages today of 
this bad boy right here. Um, and you know, my verdict hasn't changed from earlier. It was a really good book. I thought it was really good the whole time. Uh, there were no slow parts or anything that deterred me while I was reading it. I was just really engaged the whole time. It was very satisfying. It had a satisfying ending. Um, and I want to say that most of the, uh, or actually all of the plot threads, all of the major plot threads are tied up by the end very neatly. We have one like, you know, dangling thread that will be like a jumping off point for us as this series continues because I did read that it will be a series, which is very exciting because I want more Ropa, I want more future Edinburgh, like dark gloomy vibes. Very entertaining. Loved it a lot. That's really everything I have right now. I think today was a pretty good uh, creative day in my world, in my life. That means it was a good day. Uh, so I hope you had a good day too and I'll see you in the next video.